In this screencast, uh, we'll investigate predicates and uh, primitive recursively closed classes of functions. So let's review. A predicate is a Boolean valued uh, total function and that returns uh, 1 if the predicate is true uh, or 0 if uh, the predicate is false. So uh, let's ask ourselves three questions. Uh, which uh, predicates are uh, primitive recursive since they're functions so that's a valid question uh, what is the relationship if any uh, between predicates and uh, a primitive recursively closed classes of functions it's an interesting question and um, uh, can we build a small repository library of uh, uh, predicates so those are the questions that we'll consider in this screencast. Uh, so let's review our alpha predicate that we have previously proved to be a primitive recursive. Alpha x is equal to uh, 1 if x is equal to 0 and 0 if x is not equal to 0. So it's this uh, flipper. And uh, we have shown alpha uh, to be uh, primitive recursive by defining it uh, as a 1 dot minus x. You can review our previous screencasts on the theory of computation to uh, see that proof. Uh, so let's uh, prove that x equals y is primitive recursive, testing two natural um, uh, numbers. For equality is primitive recursive, or rather variables, natural variables containing natural numbers. So let's define this function, uh, d of x, y. And uh, uh, d of x, y is equal to 1 if x is equal to y, and uh, 0 if x is not equal to y. So given that alpha is primitive recursive, uh, let's try and uh, use that to define uh, d. dxy is equal to alpha of uh, the module of x minus 1. And the module of x minus 1, uh, uh, we have shown it, uh, to be primitive recursive. So if x is equal to y, then the modulo of x minus y is 0, and uh, uh, alpha of 0 is 1 and alpha of 0 is equal to 1. Now x equals y can be defined as d of x, y. x less than or equal to y is also primitive recursive. Uh, we're beginning to build our repertoire of, small repertoire of uh, uh, primitive recursive predicates that work on natural numbers. x less than or equal to y can be defined um, as follows. So this is true if and only if alpha of x dot minus y is 1. Why is that? Uh, because um, uh, x dot minus 1, x is less than or equal to y if uh, and uh, only if x dot minus y is equal to 0. So an alpha of 0 is 1. Okay, let's talk about uh, compound predicates and uh, primitive recursively closed uh, classes of functions. Um, so uh, this is um, uh, one of the theorems in, uh, uh, I think it's uh, theorem uh, number five in the second edition of uh, uh, Computability, Complexity, and Languages uh, by uh, uh, Davis, uh, Weyuker, and uh, Seagal. Uh, so theorem five in uh, uh, chapter three. So let C be uh, some primitive recursively closed class uh, and let um, uh, predicates P and Q, uh, B and C. Then uh, not P, uh, P and Q, uh, 
and uh, T or Q will also be uh, in C. So let's sketch a proof. So let um, uh, P and uh, 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 B and C. <clears throat> so uh, alpha of uh, uh, X will also be in C. Now why? Let's ask ourselves why. Uh, because alpha uh, has been shown to be primitive recursive. And uh, we have uh, proved uh, uh, a theorem before that states that um, a function is primitive recursive if and only if it belongs um, in, uh, 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 it is in every uh, primitive recursively closed class. And uh, C is uh, a primitive recursively closed class of functions. So alpha is in that class. Now, um, then uh, not P uh, can be defined via alpha as alpha of p. So alpha of p, it's a composition, so since c is primitive recursively uh, closed uh, class and p is in c, alpha of p is a composition, will also be in c, and uh, not p um, can be defined as alpha of p, and not p consequently is also in c. Now, uh, let's talk about P and Q. Let uh, P and uh, Q uh, be in C. And we're going to use the fact that uh, the binary multiplication is primitive recursive. So we have shown that X times Y, where X and Y are natural numbers, are in uh, uh, C um, uh, because uh, X and Y is a primitive recursive uh, function. And a function is primitive recursive, as we just uh, stated, uh, if and only if it belongs to every primitive recursively closed class. So it is in C. So P and Q can be defined as P times Q. So um, that means that P and Q is also in C. Okay, uh, how about P or Q, where P and Q are both in C? So that can be defined as not uh, of not P and not Q. And uh, all of those individual functions, not and and, uh, have been shown to be in C. So their composition is also in C. Okay, compound primitive recursive and uh, uh, computable predicates. So uh, the previous theorem furnishes us uh, two uh, very useful uh, corollaries. So the first corollary is that if uh, P and Q are uh, primitive recursive, then not P, uh, P and Q, and P or Q are also primitive recursive. So once we know that P and Q are primitive recursive, so all of these compound predicates are primitive recursive. And uh, similarly, uh, if P and Q are known to be computable, then uh, we know that all of those compound predicates are also computable. And why is that? So proof. It's a one-liner uh, because both uh, the class of primitive recursive functions and the class of computable functions are primitive recursively closed. So PR and computable functions computable fun uh, classes classes of functions are PRC Okay, and let's use this fact to show that um, uh, x less than y is primitive recursive. So uh, x less than y is primitive recursive uh, because it can be obtained from um, uh, primitive recursive predicates. And so by the first corollary, it is primitive recursive. <clears throat> 
So it is not of y less than or equal to x, and uh, y less than or equal to x is uh, primitive recursive, so by the corollary, the compound predicate not y less than or equal to x is also primitive recursive.